Guys, I couldn't handle it any longer. Been sitting in the house all weekend and just had to get out here and do some work. So I'm gonna pop some holes for some electrical boxes and uh, just kind of screw around a little bit out here. See what happens. Um, had surgery, I think Thursday. Got rid of some ingrown toenails for good, I hope. So mama wants me to take it easy. My buddy was sending me pictures of fish he's catching on the mountain. That's pretty rough when you're laid up to see those things, but such is life. So I'll just throw the camera down and we'll pop some holes and kind of show you what we're doing. I'm going to throw uh, some power in when we're looking at fish finders, TVs, DVD players, phone chargers, my CPAP machine, which by the way, I love. And uh, it's giving me a new lease on life. One day I'm going to tell you about it. Um, what else do I want to have in here? Probably some sort of tunes music. Uh, I want a Milwaukee battery charger. I put one of those in my camper and can't live without it now. When the generator's running, you got batteries charging. Shut the generator off when the movie's done and you can just live on batteries. So we'll get to work, put, to, put a battery in a drill and start popping some holes for an electrical rough in and we'll pound in some boxes today. Okay, so I ran down to my shop the, the other day and grabbed some boxes, electrical boxes, and uh, we got to worry about a couple things. Normally when I'm just doing electrical, I'll put my outlets on a wall, say, the top of my hammer handle, I'll just make a mark and drill a hole. But uh, this isn't normal, this is a fish house. So we got to worry about a couple things. We got to worry about fishing rod holders, and we got to worry about our drinks. So those are two necessities to me. So I want to make sure that nothing's in the way of, especially my fishing rod holders and my drinks. It looks to me like we might put a drink holder right in the middle here between the seats and possibly one up in here in case that doesn't work out too well. So I want to keep those two spaces free. Um, and we've got to keep it free right here because this is where the fishing rod holder is going to be. I think I'm going to redesign these rod holders a little bit to work in this. I've got this one built for my sled that goes the other way and just pivots on a Scotty mount. But this one, I might actually come up from the floor or from under this seat um, and flip it backwards so the rod will actually be back here when you go to set the hook. So we need a phone charger. And so I'm thinking somewhere in here we're going to throw a box. So instead of the normal hammer on the ground making your mark, what do you say we do that and make a mark? Hammer time, hammer time. We'll do both sides. Okay, so I was going to do it below the line, but I think I'm going to do it above the line, just so it's out of our way. And I'm also, I've got some tongue and groove I'm going to be making here. Normally they give you this little ledge here for drywall. I'm going to kick it out just a little bit more. Just a hair. Not even going to measure it. Just so I have a little bit more room for my wood. I like I like it a lot. So there's our phones taken care of. Now let's look at the TV next. Okay, so for the TV, I want to keep all my electrical away from our Mr. Heater, which is going to be over here. The TV is basically centered here. And uh, I've got two bars, two wooden bars going from here up to here. So I got to miss those. But basically, I'm going to throw it right in here. And I'm going to go higher than normal. The TV ends right here. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up into here, just so it's hidden. And then I, be, I should be able to plug in my TV, um, DVD player, and any other accessories you might have, even like a charger for a fish finder, uh, etc. So, and we're gonna do a double gang box on this, so that uh, we got plenty of plenty of juice.
Okay, so that covers that. I think just for giggles, I'm gonna put one down here for fish finders, underwater cameras, stuff like that. I'm gonna go ahead and go the same height on this side and it'll be buried by the TV as well. And all the cords will be covered up and also we won't get any fish splash. 31 and a quarter. Okay. What's nice about putting a few of those things in right now is I'll get my thinking caps going again and we'll kind of sit here for a minute and see what else we're thinking of. I yeah, thought of something else. Light switches. I'm gonna have some lights up in the ceiling here and I wanna have light switches in here. So I'm gonna go the same height we did on that outlet with the light switch. I know I shouldn't be so complicated with this, but I'm gonna put in a three-way switch so I can hit it from there or there and control the lights. Once again, this is a big reason I decided to go with two by four walls so I have the depth for these boxes. And uh, you can always build another one of these, you know what I mean? So remember we went to the bottom there of the line in the box. You can always build more of these, right? Okay, so there's our light switch and I don't think it'll impede with anything in the, the house, so we should be good there. Yeah. We're all but fat and happy. Oh, wait a minute. We are all of those. Had a guy, Jason, Fish Fear Me Studios, asked me what this anvil was for, for when I bend nails. So, just kind of keep it around, cover up all my mistakes here. Come on, baby. There we go. Good as new. Hope that answers the question. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, I went to pound this one in and it decided to do a loop-de-loop -loop on me. So we'll put it back in and see if we can get it to behave. Yeah, that works. Sometimes it's easy in a closed quarter to hit your your nail with the side of the hammer. Perfecto mundo. So one more thing I'm thinking here is if I do put a little table here with drink holders, may as well have USB chargers for cell phones here as well, possibly. Um, these boxes I stole out of a project, so. A lot of them have been used already and we're just reusing them. Rob the nail out of that one and make that one a new one. So I'm thinking somewhere right there in between these two chairs. Okay. Sparky's probably watching this going, what in the world are you doing, kid? Okay, and last but not least, I'm gonna put one right in here for my Milwaukee battery charger. And possibly a little trickle charger for uh, the fish finder batteries as well, so we can have some other batteries. Probably build a shelf up here and have some other batteries living back in here. And I want the Milwaukee charger to be off center, I don't want it sitting right here because it's got a pretty good red and green light on it that don't want to be on the TV. So we'll kind of keep it off center so we don't have to sit and look at that. I've thought about even putting it underneath the bed, but I want it to be more convenient than that. So on this corner, I'm gonna have a an inlet for the generator. It's gonna be a cover on the outside that has a three prong male fitting for just an extension cord. And then, so I think 
we won't really need outside outlets, but why not think about that? I should probably put one on the back of the shack. Okay, so I had a suggestion on the last video about some lights over the fish hole covers where we're fishing. Great idea. So what I'm gonna do, I did some trading with my brother-in-law, ended up with some of these LED can lights. And uh, they're gonna be pretty good and bright. I think there were 800 lumens, yeah, 800 lumens. So I think I'm gonna put two in the front and one in the back here. And also, they'll be on dimmer switches. So we'll be able to keep those as bright as we want or as dim as we want. And uh, I like these, they just take up about an inch of space and uh, should light this thing up. So there's nothing better than having good lighting when you're trying to land a fish. So thanks for that suggestion and that's what we're gonna do. So I got wondering why do I need a power outlet on my uh, on the exterior of this house? And a uh, thought came to mind, we need a smoker. If we're ever going to be doing some barbecuing or anything out, out here like that, it'd be a perfect opportunity. So I think I'm going to put an outlet right here and that'll allow us to put the smoker here or here depending on the wind. So that's why we need an outlet on the outside of the shack. Okay, done deal. Let's get out the drill. So I'm just gonna bang some holes all the way around and uh, I just usually drill them about yay high so it's comfortable to hold the drill. And we'll get going on that. We may not use all these holes, but we got them if we need them. Okay. Think we got her. That's a fun little tool there. That's a little Milwaukee whole hog. It's made for the electricians. It's not as beefy as the plumbing one, but it does pretty good. I think it's just a one speed, but uh, it'll drill them holes. I love drilling out of house. It's kind of a fun day when you're running under drill. I used to, when I was a teenager, these things used to scare me to death, but I just love them as an old fat guy now. Because I'm the boss. O-M-F-I-C. I won't tell you what that means. Okay, it's a little overkill, but I'm gonna run this in number 12 wire. Uh, you probably should run this in just 14 gauge, but uh, I've got a lot of 12 laying around, so I'm gonna use it. So we'll start stringing outlets and I'll probably do the lights a little different wire so we can have that three way. So boom de boom, let's run some wires. So remember I told you this was point B right here. We're gonna have the generator sitting here and we're gonna have an outlet right here coming in the mail. So we're gonna just put that there and we'll work our way around the structure.
you can, you try to run things in the middle of the studs so you can stay away from nails and screws coming from both directions. You don't want to get, you don't want to get hit with a nail or a screw if you can help it. Once again, I'm not an electrician, I just play one on TV. So don't kill me with your criticism, please. I'm begging you. Okay, so on this double outlet, I'm kind of cheating I'm using these little push push tabs, and uh, normally I'd use wire nuts and twist them all together, but too lazy today. You just push these in, make sure they go all the way in. And life is good. Couldn't be simpler. This actually might be a better deal as far as keeping a good connection on the bouncy trail. Okay, you can visually see that you got them all in good. And once you're there, you're good. That's all you need to do. Just need to make sure and tuck them in. Don't let the ground wires touch any of the screws on the side of the outlets. If you do that, you'll have a bad day. I'll screw these back in here that we're not using. And we'll tuck it all together. And then the wife says it's time for dinner. So we'll probably see you tomorrow. I just get these screws started. Kind of work them in together. Since I've been electrical last, I lost my vision. My eyes are about shot these days. I kind of get white with this. Don't worry, it's a construction term. Now our TV's roughed in. So that's fine. I see a ground wire a little bit closer to those screws than I like, so I just grab it and push it back. Back and out of the way. Okay guys, about 29 degrees out in the shop today. I got a fire going. Hopefully things will warm up. Just gonna throw some outlets in um, for phones and also some uh, dimmer switches for some light. Okay, the fire's raging. It's in the overfire. We'll turn it down a little bit here. Try to keep some of the heat in the building. If you look out the window, you'll see the birds walking on ice. It got down to nine degrees last night with zero wind. So that is a good thing. Won't be long. Okay, so we got that bad boy wired in. I've run a four wire here so I can do a three-way switch. I'm gonna throw, I forgot I'm not putting my dimmer there. I'm just putting a three-way switch right here and we're gonna put a three-way switch right here. And so we got some three-way switches. I've run a, a four wire here so we can have it travel between the two switches and then we'll go from there to the light. I'm actually running a wire here and I'm going to run it up here to the light and it'll come up right over here 
head here. Um, we're actually going to make this roof so it will pivot. I'm going to put some hinges on the back of the building. And we'll be able to get in here on nice warm days, push it up maybe a foot or so, so you have more room to set your fishing hooks. And uh, give us a little more breathing room in here. But I want it to hinge, hinge point there so that we can still fit it in my trailer, which was one of my goals. So that's what we're doing. Getting the three ways done right now and we'll run a wire for these boxes down at our center console. Okay, so as we talked about earlier, we're gonna put an outlet right here so that we can plug the generator into the building. So we'll put a backer board here and then I'm gonna pop a hole here so we have something firm to mount to so that we're not yanking it out of the wall. I'll tell you, those Torx screws are a little bit more money per screw, but boy, it's so nice not to have to push with all your might, mind, and soul to get that screw in on a Phillips. But it's just effortless with a uh, Torx, the old T25. Okay, so here's the outlet we're talking about here. Just got a screw hole there and a screw hole there that we'll be able to tie into this 2x4. So I'm gonna grab us a little drill and we will pop a hole so it can sit flush in the wall here. Okay, that ought to work. Okay, we'll throw that in the drill and pop the hole real quick. I could almost use my bigger drill. This'll this will work for one hole. Beauty. Beauty, beauty. Love it. Living the dream, baby. Living the dream. I'm probably going to put the ground wire up so that if gravity makes that cord fall down a little bit, it still won't unplug it. So, and I'll probably, we'll, we'll figure some things out, but that's probably what we're looking at. So, and I'm going to put some screws in here that are probably two inch because when we put our finish here, we want to be able to pull this out and have a little bit of slack too so we can make it a finished product on the outside of the building. So we'll plan for that. Okay, so this should be pretty simple. We don't even need to strip our wire that far back. I probably shouldn't have gone that far, but it is what it is. Basically strip our wires back a hair. Okay, just like so. Now we've got a bunch of play down here. If we need to pull it out in the future, we got room to do it. So I'm not even gonna screw that in right now because it's coming out. I'm gonna have this little fan. This is a 110 volt fan. I'm gonna put it on a, on a uh, dimmer as well. So it's kind of a potentiometer so I can uh, vary the speed of this fan. What I'm going to try to do here is put the fan back here on the bottom. I'm going to make a chase in my wall, grabbing hot air off the top. We're going to kind of circulate the air in this little room here. So that fan I want to have blowing out at our feet and we'll have a switch to turn it on and off and life should be good. I ought to keep it from being so hot on the top and kind of even hey out. Hey guys, so I just went out to what we call the kidnapper van my old plumbing and heating van and found some extra four inch single wall pipe, vent pipe. So I just squished it and we're gonna set it in this wall. Set it in this wall like this. I'm just gonna cut a notch out of the bottom about the size of that fan we talked about. And I'll come up here and just cut a notch out of the pipe here and put like a some sort of a covering on it, just so we can draw the air in. And then this will be just a case that's hidden in the wall. And it should work out pretty good. So I just took that pipe, squeezed it. We'll just slap it in there. Should work great. Okay guys, so we're gonna wire in our final three-way switch here. And then I'll take you on a grand tour. Um, 
So first thing we do, we're going to get rid of our neutrals there, our white wires. We've got the black wire here going to the light, and then we got our travelers right here. So I'm going to tie these grounds together real quick. Once again, I'm cheating on these little connectors. Probably pay for it later, but hope not. So there's our ground wires. And then we're going to tie those whites together real quick. We've got our connector. You don't really need a neutral in these boxes, but you do because of some code they have. If, I guess down the road you might have change of plans and do something different, so they want you to have neutrals in there. But you don't use them on the circuit. So we'll fire up our ground wire here. And then we will take the tool here and bend those around. Okay, so we've got one black screw and two gold screws or bronze. Um, so we'll take the, the one going to the light, which is this little three wire here, put it to the black. Turn it so when I tighten my drill it won't undo itself. And then the traveling wires doesn't matter which way you hook them up. They just go to the bottom two screws that are either gold or bronze. So we are tied in. I just finished the other one. Um, let's see how to turn that. Just finished the other one on the other side. So now we've got a three-way switch. So either fisherman can flip a switch and turn all the lights on or off on either side so there's no reaching in this tent we got what we need where we need it when we need it so we're getting getting close we'll just jam those in the box i'll come back and staple all these wires i've run out of staples such as life i think i've got some down by the shop My cousin Ryan, he's an electrical engineer. Last thing he told me when I talked to him is don't make it too complicated. Oh boy. And I told you guys I was gonna keep this under $20. I didn't tell you how many times I was gonna keep it under $20. So, didn't tell the wife that either. But it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be fun. Okay guys, so I want to give you a little brief walkthrough. I apologize for the mess. Um, I'm going to try to get editing this video tonight. But I just want to let you know where we're at. Um, you can see where I'm sitting here. It's going to work perfect there. Um, we've got that chase that we built. Got a fan here. That switch will turn the fan on. It actually moves some pretty good air. It's a little bit noisy, so I might get a variable switch there. But uh, anyways, um, I do have these lights for the ceiling right here on the three ways here. And we can adjust it over here, up and down by that. I'm going to have two of those on that switch. And one's going to be back here when we're looking for fishing rods on this switch. And I like these switches there because then when I'm laying in bed, I can reach them and shut them clear off. That actually shuts that off. It's got a little snap right on the bottom. It shuts it off. But we did put a three-way in there. So as soon as somebody catches a fish, you can flip it on here or the guy over here can flip it on. So the guy catching the fish doesn't have to do anything. The lights are on. Fish is going to get caught. So we put... An outlet here sitting down in the front 
Got an outlet there for fish finders, whatnot. TV, DVD, that kind of garbage. That's where we hooked in for our main power. Just for my reference, I shot my main power and then I jumped over to this first outlet. And then I started one, two, and went around. I had to cut a channel in the door there. And I haven't put that piece back up yet, but I cut a channel in the door header. Just came down and grabbed all my different boxes with my power. Um, we've got USBs here on this side for cell phone for this guy. USB here for cell phone for this guy. Got that dedicated outlet there for my CPAP machine. Come down here, we've got USB and 110. I'm going to build me a little console here coming out as far as I can to put two Yeti drinks in there, 30 ounce Yetis, and maybe a cell phone charger that you just set your phone on. Um, but for sure we'll have charging capabilities over here. So that's pretty much the electrical, guys. Um, just really excited. Uh, we Once again, we did put an outlet we did put an outlet on the outside um, for the uh, barbecue for the Traeger and I also thought that outlet would be good for the minnow tank if we had minnows that we need to aerate also back behind here where we have that fan plugged in that wouldn't be another bad spot to put a minnow cooler with an aerator and we could just flip it on with the same switch that the fan uses. So I might even run a separate wire so I could have them independent later and have two switches in one box. It wasn't too complicated, but I think we made it overkill for sure, but that's okay. It's a nice livable space now. And uh, next part, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get the interior walls going and then I'll be able to insulate and then I'll do the exterior walls and we're going to do the roof and once again i've made the roof so all my wiring's coming up in the very back um, there's no wiring around the front perimeter because i'm going to put hinges on the back of the roof we'll be able to push this roof up and uh just for now i'm just going to have it go up i might build something for the triangles on the sides and the front end here so that it would actually be insulated as well but probably just make it so you can fish in the daytime with the roof kicked up and when things get cold at night, kick it back down and turn on a movie and get to fishing. So, so thanks again. Um, hope you enjoyed this, this video. I'm not so sure this one will be very entertaining either, but uh, we'll see what it is. It is what it is. So I hope you enjoy the ride. I, I know I did today. Um, usually when I do a little bit of electrical work, when I put, turn the power on, I hear a pop and see some smoke but not today everything worked out superb so knock on wood so we'll catch you on the next one thanks again tight lines <laughs>